Hejole Ahanye Asumdui Enkamu. I want to thank Papa Kimbi and the entire session for giving me this opportunity once again to come and worship with you. Papa, thank you very much. Today is the 11th of June, 2023, and it is the first Sunday after Trinity. The theme for our consideration this morning is reward for being obedient. Reward for being obedient. Can we please bow down our head in prayer? Dear Lord, once again, we thank you this morning for your gift of life, for your care, love, and abundant grace unto your children. Lord, we have gathered under your throne of grace. We are hungry for your word. Father, stretch forth your hand and touch my lips. Use me as a vessel so that, Lord, your children will be nourished. And Father, speak to me as well. We thank you, Father, for an answered prayer. Amen. Beloved, good morning. And I trust we are all doing well. To God be the glory. This morning's theme that had been given to you and I to reflect tells us how we should connect to our sovereign Lord. Let me create a scenario. Imagine if you will that you work for a company whose president found it necessary to travel out of the country and spend an extended period of time abroad. So he says to you and I, and other trusted employees, look, I am going to leave. And while I am gone, I want you to pay close attention to the business. You manage things while I am away. I will write to you regularly and when I do, I will instruct you in what you should do from now until I return from this trip. We all agree. He lives and stays away a couple of years. During that time, he writes often, communicating his desires and concern. Finally, he returns. He walks up to the front door of the company one morning, and immediately, he discovers everything was in a mess. Weeds were flourishing all over in the flower pot in front of the office. And windows broken across the front of the building. The receptionist at the front desk was dozing. Loud music roaring from several offices. Two or three people engaged in fun in the back room. Instead of making a profit, the business has suffered a great loss. Without hesitation, he calls everyone. He calls everyone together. And with a frown, he asks, what happened? Didn't you get my letters? Because he instructed them that whilst he's away, he's going to write letters to tell them what to do. Then they responded, oh yeah, we did receive the letters. We got all the letters. We've even bound them in a book and some of us have memorized them. In fact, we have a letter study every Sunday. You know, those who, really, who were really great, those were really great letters. I think the president would then ask, but what did you do about my instructions? Because he kept giving these instructions in the several letters that he wrote to them. And no doubt the employees will respond, do? What should we do with the letters? Well, nothing. But we read every one. We read all those letters. Beloved, all I am trying to drive home is that God has called us to be achievers. Hallelujah. God has called us to be obedient to him. 
and he has given us some very helpful information. The Bible tells us what he expects and how we can get there. This morning, we'll be looking at the rewards of obedience and how that applies to us as we try to break free from the casual Christian growth. Praise the Lord. We all heard the readings. And this is not the first time you and I are going to try to weave these three readings so that we can apply it to our daily lives. We see God's call to Abraham. It was a call made by God so that he can be touched. He can move the way. It was an instruction. It was a command from his land, from his friends, and even his father's home. We also know the blessings or promises of God to Abraham if he did God's request. Severally, we have been called that we have to move from one place to another. But we can testify that it takes us, I don't know, several decisions before we can hear the word of God. Abraham was promised an exceptional land as an inheritance and also to be to all families in the world. Through Abraham's family tree, Jesus Christ was born to save humanity. Through Jesus Christ, people can have personal relationship with God and be blessed beyond measure. This morning, I'm here to encourage you that not only those who mount the pulpit to preach, to propagate the word, to send the message, are only those who have been called. As Christians, we have all been called. Hallelujah. We have our individual gifts, and we know how we have to use them. This morning, God is calling you and I, and he's asking us to obey. He says we should be obedient. Just be obedient. And the rewards that he has for us are simply numerous. Abraham had to do what God wanted him to do. This man leaving his home and friends and traveling to a new land where God promised to build a great nation from his own family. God may be trying to lead you to a place of greater service and usefulness for him. Don't let the comfort and security of your present position make you miss God's plan. Hallelujah. It is an encouragement because you and I had been called to move. God planned to develop a nation of people. He will call his own people. He called Abraham from the godless, self-centered city of earth to a fertile region called Canaan, where a God-centered moral nation could be established. Though small in dimension, the land of Canaan was the focal point for most of the history of Israel, as well as Christianity today. We know that sometimes our departure from one point to another becomes an issue because it is not comfortable. Abraham left everything behind. This small land given to one man, Abraham, has had a tremendous impact on world history. What are you doing to serve the Lord? Are we being obedient when we are being asked to move? towards a particular direction. Do we suddenly made a U-turn? Abraham developed a close or intimate and wonderful relationship with God. How often do we have the time to sit with our families to share the word of God? We do. But the life in Tema being a cosmopolitan area makes all of us run every morning from home. Abraham was obedient. 
This morning, we are being called to be obedient. By obedience, Abraham reached the promised land. And we were told that Abraham regularly built altars. Altars were built or used in many religions, but for God's people, altars were more than places of worship. Abraham has two purposes. And the two reasons were that for prayer and worship, and then again, reminders of God's promise so that he will be blessed. He was doing this not in vain. Sometimes when we are being blessed to do something for the Lord, what do we do? Do we build some memorials? This morning, you and I are to share this word so that we can move and be deep rooted in the word. And once we are obedient, it comes with all the blessings. We learned also that God continued to promise Abraham and he blessed him. Although Abraham had turned 100 years and his wife Sarah's womb was dead, we learn in Genesis 12, 7 that Abraham couldn't survive spiritually without regularly renewing his love and loyalty to God. God is speaking to you and I. How often do we do this? Regular worship helps us to remember God's design and motivates us to obey him. Hallelujah. Let us always connect. Let us always connect. He did not swear at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Paul was telling us in Romans chapter 4, the verse 16 through to 20, he explains that Abraham has pleased God through faith alone. We too are saved by faith, plus nothing. It is not by loving God and doing good that we are saved. We are saved only through faith in Christ, trusting in him, so that our sins will always be forgiven. How well do we think our faith are deeply rooted? Is it the kind of faith that has no firm standings? Is it the kind of faith that sometimes you doubt the things that the Lord can do for you when he promised you? This morning, let us together meditate on these words. Because without faith, then we are nothing. 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 Abraham never doubted that God will fulfill his promise. In fact, Abraham's life was marked by mistakes, sin, and failures, as well as wisdom and goodness. But he consistently trusted God. His faith his faith was strengthened by the obstacles he faced, and his life was an example of faith in action. Hallelujah. We all knew what he went through. We sometimes ask ourselves when we have our knees put before our sovereign Lord, and it's taking quite some time, and then we will be questioning ourselves that why me? Who are we? To ask God questions. This morning I want to encourage someone. When I was just reflecting on my sermon, this dawn, I was asking myself, Lord, you are speaking to me. I don't know why Papa has to fix this sermon and ask me to come and preach because I am Abraham. I was speaking to myself severally. And if I have to share a testimony, I don't think I am going to make the 20 minutes time. At the proper time, we will do so. Hallelujah. Matthew tells us that Jarius and the woman with the issue of blood both acted on their faith in Jesus before they received their blessings. The latter being made whole and the former's daughter raised from the dead. 
By faith, Matthew cannot go unnoticed since he also followed Jesus immediately after Jesus called him. Matthew got up and followed Jesus, living a lucrative career. Beloved, when God calls you to follow or obey him, do you do it with as much abandon as Matthew? Sometimes the decision to follow Christ requires difficult and painful choices. Like Matthew, we must decide to leave behind those things that will keep us from following God. And it is very true. Once you've heard that voice, that get up and leave your comfort zone, don't hesitate. Just move. The rest will be history. The Lord himself is going to support you in whatever he has tasked you to do. Hallelujah. And I don't think any of us has regretted when you are being tasked to do something. There is reward, great reward in obeying the Lord. What do we learn? Have we followed these examples? If we believe that God has called us through Jesus Christ, we must be ready to trust and obey him all the days of our life, even in the face of difficulty. We must be prepared to leave everything that destroys our relationship with the Lord. As we heard in Matthew 9.9, when we look at Philippians chapter 3-7, the word and its riches, fame and personal I mean acquiring every wealth you want to get on this earth we must leave all these things they are good but sometimes we cannot serve two masters hallelujah all these things God gives to us in abundance when we follow him these are commandments these are rules and there are promises attached to these things and so children must learn to obey their parents so that it will be well with them and their days may be long. It comes with a promise. Ephesians chapter 6, the verse 1. Subordinates must learn to obey their superiors in the community and workplaces. Superiors are also cautioned about how they treat their subordinates because they, the superiors, also have a master in heaven. Hallelujah. And so if you own a business, and you have employees that doesn't mean you have to trample on them do what is required we have rules labor rules in our country in our land and so once the employees are obeying the set of rules that you have in your individual or respective businesses it is the same thing the Lord has asked us to obey and it comes with rewards hallelujah what can we learn from Abraham this morning I just want to give five out of few rewards of obedience and then I will bring my sermon to a close we can achieve our goals when we decide to believe God when you and I believe God to the point of no return, miracles are guaranteed. Abraham did not receive the miracle of Isaac until he became fully persuaded. Hang on to the promise of God for as long as possible. Your miracle will certainly come. Hallelujah. When we obey God, it does not mean everything will be fine. No, but it does mean God will see us through. Obedience is a choice we make. We prepare to pay a price, but it's worth it. God will do his part. There is a divine partnership in obedience. As I was pondering upon this theme in my heart, I realized how much Christians we need to grow in obedience. What are some of these things we have learned from Abraham this morning? There are various levels of obedience. The first of them is your obedience to God, to his word, to the voice of his spirit. 
Following it comes your obedience to your parents, both physical and spiritual, and leaders, both spiritual and secular, even the government and the law of the land. Of course, if any of them challenge your obedience to God, your first commitment should be to obey God over the law or system of the land, or even the parents or leaders. I want us to know just this. The Bible promises in, in response to our obedience. Here I am, I'm trying to give you a picture of how obedience is not such a bad and rewardless thing. One, long life. If you obey all the decrees and commands I'm giving you today, all will be well with you and your children. I'm giving you these instructions so you will enjoy a long life in the land that the Lord your God is giving you for all the time. Hallelujah. This is Deuteronomy chapter 4, the verse 40. One thing that we all heard is the fact that most things in life, including jobs, wealth, health, even ministry, have a temporary run. They don't last for long. Issues and worries and challenges and problems keep creeping in. And that is normal because that is how life is. However, the perks of working in obedience is that God will bless you with longevity, not just for your life, but also the work of your hands. Two, unexpected favor. But Noah found favor with the law. Genesis chapter 6, the verse 8. The stories of Noah and even Ruth are splendid examples of how God favors a man or woman who walks in obedience. What Ruth was told to do by her mother-in-law was outrageous, and Ruth knew nothing of the outcome, yet she blindly trusted and obeyed Naomi, leading to a marriage and a blessed future with Boaz. If you have been expecting a breakthrough in your life, look for ways to exercise obedience. Hallelujah. Three, it promotes worship. But Samuel replied, what is more pleasing to the Lord? Your burnt offerings and sacrifices of your obedience to his voice? Listen, obedience is better than sacrifice, and submission is better than offering the fat of rams. First Samuel 15, 22. First Samuel 15, 22. Every worship, offering, or even monetary giving that comes outside of obedience is rejected by God. That is the story of King Saul and even the story of Cain. When we give to God, it has to be coupled with obedience. In other words, it's our obedience that makes our worship acceptable before God. Hallelujah. Four, power and authority. King Totem became powerful because he was careful to live in obedience to the Lord his God. Second Chronicles, Chronicles chapter 27, verse 6. King Jotham became powerful because he was careful to live in obedience to the Lord his God. There is a wrong notion that when we walk in obedience, we lose the power and authority over our own lives. That somebody else is in control of our lives. No, that is the joy of surrender to God. The more you yield and obey, the more powerful and authoritative you become. This includes your ministry your secular work, your family, church, or even relationship. Let me say that obedience adds up to blessing and multiplication. This is what the Lord says. Because you have obeyed me and have not withheld even your son, your only son, I swear by my own name that I will certainly bless you. I will multiply your descendants beyond, beyond number, like the stars in the sky and the sun of the seashore. Your descendants will conquer the cities of their enemies. Genesis chapter 22, 16 through to 17. I'm, I'm, I'm very sure you will be excited about the blessings and multiplication. Hallelujah. But Abraham had to come to a point of sacrificing the blessing and the only point of increase in his life for the sake of obedience. It is not always an easy thing to be able to obey because it involves a lot of sacrifice and giving up. But when you obey, 
you will surely come out of it with so much of blessings and overflow in your life that you will not be able to handle it. Father, this morning, you have spoken to us. And I want to conclude that Jesus came to seek and save us. The great physician Jesus Christ is calling you and I to a wonderful life and relationship and to partake in his glory. This morning, the Lord has spoken to you and I and he's asking us that we should obey him. It is a very difficult task, but it comes with that assurance from the Lord who created you and I. I believe and hope that as we continue on in this journey, as we grow, let us relate closer to each other, our families, where we work, our ministry, so that whatever rules that has been set down for us, we must obey them. Hallelujah. I want Meridian Echoes to help me sing when we walk in the Lord, in the light of his word. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, for the glory he sheds on our way. God, this morning we are grateful to you. The reward of being obedient is engraved on our hearts this morning. So, Father, we are pleading with you, Holy Spirit, to continue reminding us that we should. always be obedient to our creator the rules that are being set 
down for us to respect. Lord, let us emulate the character of Abraham. Lord, I pray that you will forever guide us daily. We thank you this morning for your word. We bless your name and we will forever remain connected to you. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, the only living God. Amen. Light. There is light. My name is the Reverend Dr. Godwin Nino Udonko. I'm the